How's it going everybody? Max here coming to you from New York City. Now, if you've been following me on Facebook for a while, you know that I'm a massive fan of coffee. Personal favorite, iced, cold brew, black, close second, espresso, love it. Uh, but coffee has a number of mind-blowing factoids surrounding it, and I'd like to share some of that information with you in this update. So, for one, coffee is America's number one source of antioxidants. Now, coffee itself is a really high um, repository for antioxidants in the form of polyphenols. And you know, there are obviously foods that uh, have way more, but the frequency of consumption in the United States actually makes it America's number one source of dietary antioxidants. Now, scientists found that the antioxidant value in decaffeinated brews versus caffeinated brews were roughly the same, so whatever your preference is, drink up. Now, the second most mind-blowing thing about coffee is the fact that adding milk to it makes the antioxidants in coffee less bioavailable to you. Now, this is true. The polyphenols that I was just talking about that lend coffee this really high antioxidant value have a strong affinity for protein. And when you add milk, which has a protein in it called casein, the polyphenols and the proteins bind together and those antioxidants become less available to you. So if you really value your antioxidants, skip the milk. Now, the third most fascinating thing about coffee is that coffee is actually a great source of soluble fiber. Now, if you're familiar with my work, you know that I talk a lot about the value of soluble fiber, particularly uh, because it feeds the microbiota in your large intestine, and this soluble fiber then ferments to really important short-chain fatty acids like butyrate. Coffee is actually an amazing source of this exact kind of fiber that you want. It's true, researchers found that an eight ounce cup of coffee can contain as much as one and a half grams of soluble fiber. And really, who drinks only eight ounces? of coffee or average medium-sized brew from a large coffee chain can contain as much as three grams of this amazing fiber. And that's very likely at least one of the mediating factors behind why coffee is said to again and again provide cardioprotective and neuroprotective effects. Now, the fourth and possibly most amazing thing about coffee is that it can prevent your death. Yeah, it's true. Researchers looked at coffee drinkers and what they found was that those who drank on average one cup of coffee a day had a 6% reduced risk of early mortality. Those who drank one to three cups had an 8% reduced risk, and three to five cups had a 15% reduced risk. Now the fifth most mind-blowing thing about coffee, as if preventing your early death wasn't enough, is that it's really good for the brain. So it turns out that aside from the well-observed effects that coffee and caffeine has on your attention and on your focus, it actually bolsters your long-term memory as well, as researchers from Johns Hopkins University recently found out. There's also evidence that like I mentioned, coffee provides a neuroprotective effect, and that might be why, for diseases like Parkinson's, there appears to be a vast risk reduction for those who drink the most amount of coffee. Now, the sixth and final most mind-blowing thing about coffee is that timing matters. So, most of us tend to wake up and then go straight for the coffee pot, but it turns out that when you wake up, that's when your cortisol levels, the levels of the stress hormone in your body, are highest, and that's an evolutionary mechanism to ensure that you get out of bed and you seize the day. And having elevated levels of cortisol in the body and then throwing caffeine on top of that can actually be counterproductive to both the effect of caffeine and cortisol's role in your body. So a nice little hack is to actually wait about an hour until those cortisol levels subside and then have your first cup of brew, and that might potentially reduce your risk of experiencing adrenal fatigue fatigue, which nobody wants. All right, everybody, I hope that was enlightening to you. Now, keep in mind, guys, that I'm not telling everybody to go out and start drinking three, four, five cups of coffee a day. You've got to listen to your body, but the evidence does seem to suggest that coffee is really beneficial to your health, um, and so if it works for you, drink up. If you enjoy these, join the Breadhead mailing list at breadheadmovie.com, subscribe to me on YouTube, youtube.com slash and I will see you next time.